All right, so today's gonna be about VirtualBox, and VirtualBox will basically allow you to run different OSs with with inside your your Ubuntu system or Windows system or Mac or whatever. Um, if you're dual booting, um, that's fine. You know, a lot of people just if they if they need to do something in Windows, they just you know restart the machine and, and boot into Windows. Uh, sometimes that can be a little bit annoying if you want to do something like, like really really minor. You know what I mean? You know, that's when VirtualBox can be real handy, where you can just stay on your Ubuntu system and just run open uh, VirtualBox and um, and uh, do what you need to do then you know just close it down and you're done so and it's also another good way to uh, test drive you know Linux distros and, and whatever you know what I mean so anyways here we go so this is, this is the uh, website if you want to you can just download the dev packages if you want there's also some instructions for adding the, the uh, PPA uh, the easiest way I found just to get it is to uh, to add the PPA I meaning just to go ahead and install a Ubuntu tweak right I already had him when uh, did that already. Let me just try a tweak. Here we go. And go to the source center, unlock it, give your password, and you're gonna find it way at the bottom. Where are you at? There it is. All right, just go ahead and like check it, then refresh it. You know what I mean, and uh, then quit. And there's two versions of VirtualBox. There's an open source version, and there's this one right here. Um, they're very, very similar. The only, the only difference I really noticed is I think this one, the the closed one, has like USB support. You know, if you want to plug in a zip drive to it or something. There's a couple other little things, but anyways, um, to install it, it might be in your software center right away. I'm not too sure. Let's see Oracle. Here it is. So you see, I don't know if you notice how I did that. Instead of having to search for it, you could search for it, but if you know you added a PPA, your PPAs will be listed right here on the side. So it's the Oracle Corporation VirtualBox 4.0. This is the newer one. The newer one actually I like. Go ahead and install it. It's gonna take a little while. It has a download, I don't know, 50 megs or so. So let me go ahead and just stop it right here and I'll be back in a little bit. All right, so it's all finished, right? And um, so what I'm gonna be doing now is showing you how to install Windows XP. And uh, as far as how you get Windows XP, of course, you can buy it, or you can possibly use a, a an OEM Dell CD, right? That might work. You might get hit with a 30-day notice or something. Uh, if you have a, if you actually own a copy and it's installed on another machine, if you have the product key, you should be able to to install it, give it the product key, it'll activate it. But if you update it, you might, you know, you might get a a warning or something. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to install it with with a product key. It'll activate just fine. Just as long as I don't update it, I should be okay. So, however you do it, that's really on you. I can't really show you anything illegal, illegal, you know, or cracking or whatever. So, anyways, I'm going to go and type VirtualBox. There it is. So let's go ahead and hit new. Make a new hard disk. Next, we're going to give it a name. XP. Uh, there's other options in here, of course. There's, there's Linux, uh, BSD, there's IBM OS or whatever, uh, Mac OS X, if you want to try that. Uh, I haven't tried that yet, but I don't know if it'll work for me because I have a, an AMD machine. I don't know if it only applies to Intel's or not, but anyways. Um, there's also the options for, for Windows, you know, Windows 7, Vista, whatever, 64-bit, 32-bit. So anyways, click Next. <clears throat> Memory size, it it's depends on your hardware. If you, if you have a little laptop that only has like 512 megs of RAM, I wouldn't bother with this, but uh, if you have about a gigabyte, you should be able to get away with it. Maybe like you know 256. You know what I mean? And just as long as you're running like really, uh, you know, not really any type of heavy applications, you should be all right. Um, for me, since I have three and a half gigs, I'm gonna give it a little bit more. Maybe five. No, I'll give it a gig. Maybe. There we go. I'll give it a gigabyte for now. I probably don't need it, but whatever. Next. Uh, create a new boot disk, hard disk, yes, because I don't have a pre-existing one, so next. Alright, so there's dynamic and, and fixed size. So dynamic is basically, you, you assign it a size, how big you want the hard drive is, right? How, you know, the size of it. Um, say you give it 30 gigs, so when you install it, out of the 30, you only use maybe like 5. So you install some applications, so, you know, the 5 adds up to maybe like 8 or so. So you got 8 gigs being used out of 30. 
and those 30 gigs will take a chunk out of your physical hard drive, your home folder, or whatever it is you're using. So what Dynamic does, it only even though you gave it 30 gigs, only 8 gigs will be taken away from your physical hard drive that's on your system itself, not the virtual drive. So, And a fixed storage size is, say, like if I gave it 30 gigs, it'll take 30 gigs out of my physical hard drive, the one I actually have Ubuntu installed on or what I'm, I'm hosting with. So you're better off using Dynamic. Press Next. So to give you an idea, um, this hard drive I have Ubuntu installed on is a basically a test hard drive. See, I only have 34 gigs. It's really a, a 60 gig, I think, in total. Um, so I'm going to give it, let's see, I'm going to give it 20 gigabytes. 25. All right, give it 25. And all I have is 37 to work with. So next. All right, finish. Finish. All right, see, I still have 30, 30 uh, whatever. See, it's still there, 37. So even though I gave it 25, it didn't take, you know, 25 out of the 37. If it was the fixed one, it would have. So anyways, hopefully that makes sense to you. <laughs> Let me close that off. All right, so I have Windows XP already, uh, you know, installed. I mean, I installed it in my uh, CD-ROM drive over here. Click Next. I mean, Start. Uh, right control, okay, that's your host key. So like anytime you have your 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 cursor, right, and you click inside this little box, virtual box, your cursor will disappear and be inside the box and out of here. To retrieve your cursor to bring it back out so you can run on your Unity desktop or, or, or classic desktop, you have to hit the right control key on your keyboard. But, oh, excuse me. But just keep in mind that some laptops don't have a right control key. Even my, my uh, desktop keyboard doesn't have it, so I have to be careful with that. So press OK. All right, that's my hard drive. I mean, not my hard drive. I'm sorry, my uh, CD, DVD, ROM drive. There it goes. Windows XP is starting, and um, so if you know how to install Windows XP, you know, go ahead and you know, don't even bother watching. Just, just for people who don't know how to do this, you know what I mean? So, so it might be a little bit of a long video. I'll try to cut some stuff out that you don't. That's probably not important. But I do want to show this part though. All right, so it's asking you whether you whether or not you want to repair or, or delete or reinstall or whatever. So since there's nothing on my on this virtual disk, I'm just going to hit enter. You have to agree to the EULA. So it's F8, I believe. All right. So here's that uh, partition that I made, the the 25 gigabytes or whatever, right here. So if there was something on it, you press D to delete, but there's nothing on there anyway, so go ahead and hit enter. I'm going to use the quick format. Um, if you have an older hard drive and you're installing Windows onto an older hard drive that's maybe maybe like four or five, six years, you know, you may want to do the slow one, because from what I understand, it will actually map around all the, all the imperfections on it or something. Anyways, I'm just going to go for the quick one. Now it's going to format the uh, the virtual disk. And uh, for people who are not familiar with VirtualBox, you know this is nothing. This is not doing anything to your your physical hard drive. This is only on a little, basically it's a little file or like a a virtual disk. Let's see if it's in here. Here it is. I believe this is it right here. This right here is actually this. So this is installing onto here. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. So anyways. So set up is copying files. Um, so it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna go it's gonna go ahead and copy off the CD into this. Uh, it's gonna take a little while. Um, I'm gonna stop the video right now. Um, pretty much when it's done. 
it'll just restart and it'll it'll take you through another process and I'll I'll continue the video from there. Okay, so uh, it already rebooted basically. Now I'm I'm at this screen, and uh, if you have a you know of course if you have right control on your keyboard, go ahead and click inside of here, and we need we need to uh, you know retrieve your mouse, hit right right control, and it'll retrieve it. But I don't have that, so I have to use I guess the tab button to navigate through here. So it's asking me about regions or whatever uh, languages. What is this? Click customize. Blah, blah. Uh, that's all right. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit next. There we go. Next. All right. Give it a name. I'm just gonna give it Linux. Tab Linux. Give it whatever you want. Let's see. Uh, next. Now I have to get the product key. So uh, I gotta stop it. I'll be right back in a little bit. Okay. So I uh, I type in the product key. Now I'm at this, and this is basically your administrator password, like your. I guess kind of like your root password in a way. I don't. I don't know how to really explain it, but anyways, um, just give it a password, something you can remember. Same thing for me. I'm gonna give it, you know, whatever Linux. I guess. No big deal. All right. Now let's go here. Next. All right. Next. Time and date. And it's gonna continue on. It's gonna go ahead and get, go ahead and install. Even though it says 31 minutes to install, it's really more like 15 or 10. You know what I mean? It's, it doesn't really take that long. And um, it's going to reboot one more time. Then it's going to ask you for your, uh, I guess, your your uh, user accounts and stuff like that. And I'll start the video at that part. So I'll be back in a little bit. Oh, wait. What's this? Typical. Oh, network. Okay, that's just basically your, your uh, internet connection. That's fine. All right, so I'll be back in a little bit. All right, so it uh, it already it already uh, what do you call it uh, rebooted. So now I'm at this screen, and um, basically what what this is saying that it's gonna it's gonna show Windows in low resolution because there's no graphic drivers or whatever. Um, I'm gonna have to go ahead and click my my mouse in here because the tab button doesn't seem to work. So capture it. So now I'm inside here. And like I said before, to get your mouse out of here, hit the right control key, but I don't have one, so. Okay. Okay. So now I'm locked in here for now. Might take a little bit, so. Come on. And uh, right now, like I said before, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this off a CD. If you were to actually copy it to an ISO file, you can do that too. And it goes a lot quicker, so anyways. Yes, yes. Next. No, no updates for me. Checking your internet connectivity. Local network, yes. Next. Nope, no registration for me. <laughs> Next. Username, uh, it's whatever. Next, finish. <clears throat> now you should have a desktop. Now, what I'm going to show you how to do now is install the the guest editions, right? And uh, I think what I should do is just uh, end the video now then get into the, all the other technical details because right now you you actually have a, a desktop that was kind of like my goal just to get get to this point so uh you know it works just fine you know you can go on you know the internet if you wanted to there you go see it works and um as you can see it's like a little square so what i'm gonna do in the next video is show you how to install the guest editions it's basically a little like the drivers for virtual box so allow you to resize the window make make windows the 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 Windows XP into a full, full you know, full screen, I guess, and also to run it in seamless mode. And I don't know if seamless word, seamless mode actually works on Unity, so that's something I'm kind of curious about too. So, anyways, I'll do that in the next video. So uh, I'll post that as soon as possible, okay? Because I know I've been I've been kind of laggy on my on my videos and stuff. So, you know, I'm in town now, so I have no excuse. So, <laughs> anyways, I'll be I'll see you guys in a bit. So let me go ahead and turn this off. 
turn off video, I'm mean, sorry, turn off uh, Windows. And my mouse should be able to uh, exit this. Uh, there it goes. It's gone. All right, well, I'll see you guys soon.